Hey there, I'm Alex, and today I want to talk to you about 8-bit to half float copycat. So all this is, is a cat file that was trained using copycat inside of Nuke. And the idea behind it is that you can use images that are limited to 8 bits and hopefully introduce a higher dynamic range. This is particularly useful with AI images, AI video, of course. You could also use it with stock video and stock images that are limited to 8 bit. I think this is a very good experiment that at some point Framestore did something very similar for explosions on the matrix. So this is definitely something that can work work and while I think this is just a starting point because I would I think it would require a lot more training to really get a model to do this properly this is definitely a proof of concept so that you can start thinking about this for any future projects you can actually train cat files specific to your shots to get the result that is shared here the blog post explains a bit what the tool does how you can use it and even shows you a bit a few examples of what happens when you when you expose down the image just so you can see how those highlights behave I'll get to that in a minute it also shows you how to set it up so it's actually quite straightforward I'll show you in a minute and then the author goes through and explains exactly how this was trained what footage it was used on and how long it took so it looks like it took two and a half days on an RTX 3090 again this is I think just definitely scratching the surface of what can be done with this if you have enough data to train on if you prep it correctly and if you let it train for long enough I recommend you go ahead and download and keep it in your arsenal because you don't know when it can get you out of a jam and if you want to do that you can come again to the blog post and as usual I'll be posting links to everything in the description of the video. If you come down here on the blog post right below the examples, you'll see there is a download model here, a GitHub link. So if you click that, that'll take you, of course, to their GitHub link. And from here, you can download the model and the Nuke script directly. Once you have that downloaded and saved, what I did is I threw it into my Cattery folder and I saved it under an 8-bit to float cat folder. And then from there, I made sure that I'm keeping the original Nuke script as well as the cat file, which is where all the training data lives. Once you have that, you can just drag the Nuke script into your Nuke window, and that will give you the node tree for you to connect your plate and get a proper output. When I drag that Nuke script into the Nuke window, what I get is a series of nodes that make sure that everything is set up correctly for you. So you can you can actually get rid of the first one here. This is just a no op letting you know that you should input and output ACCG so that make sure that when you set up your project, you are actually working in ACES color space. And then from here, you keep everything else as, as it comes just make sure that the transformations are set up correctly here so in this case the author set it to adx10 and coming out as accg and then for the other color space coming in it would be the inverse of that that all comes set up by default so you really shouldn't have to do anything else and then for the inference file here you just need to make sure that you're pointing it to the correct place where you're saving your cat file so i'm going to go ahead and delete that for now because i've already set up my script and i just wanted to walk you through a few examples so that you can see more or less what you can expect if i go here and to my first example. The strong suit of this tool is actually recovering any clamped highlights that you can expect from 8-bit video or, or images. And a perfect example would be something like a brake light or, or headlight on a car or, or a motorcycle like I have here. If I look at my original here, if I if I gamma down here, what you're going to see is, of course, as expected, that gets clamped. If I sample it, it doesn't go past one, of course. Same with the headlight here. So it just, you know, hovers around that 0 0.99, 0 0.98 mark in terms of brightness. So if once it goes through the whole stack and I've gone ahead and I've rendered these out just so it's a bit faster to preview the results. If I A, B between the original and the one gone through the cat file, what you'll see is that we start getting a lot of information in those highlights. If I gamma down again here and I just go to the original, what you'll see is that we we, we really don't get anything. It's just like a flat white yellowish circle. But if we if I A, B between the result and the original, you'll see that we get a bunch of range back into our image. Not perfect. Sometimes it's a bit noisy. It won't always work for every, any image you have. But it does a pretty good job compared to not having anything. If I compare this the before and after, you can see how much range is restored there. And the cool thing is that if I sample this and I zoom in here into my values, what you'll see is that it's around the 2, 2.4. Now, if I if I just go back to the original, then you'll see it's just, you know, limiting itself to just under one. So it's not necessarily something that's going to change your scene massively, especially if we go back to our original gamma. If I AB between those two, you get a feeling that something's happening, but not necessarily something that's going to change it wildly. But I think it is definitely better to have than not. So if I if I compare, if you look at all the lights in the scene here while I go back and forth, you can see it's actually doing something that would be a lot more painful to do by hand. Let me just show you a few examples here. Here's a here's a, a good example with a lot of highlights. And again, this, this tool in particular thrives on highlights. Anything that should go past one. If I gamma down here again, you'll see all those highlights are pretty muted. And if I go and show you the output 
through the CAD file, you see how it restores some of the highlights that should be there. I would love to have something like this coming straight from the foundry where they throw a massive data set at it and train it for a long time. I think it is a no brainer to add something like this to Cattery done properly. So let me move on to my next example here. Here I have a wet road. If I just go back and forth between the original and the result, what you'll see is that highlights are extremely clamped on this one. If I, if I leave it here at 0 0.09 and then compared, to the output from that inference node, you see how much highlights are recovered. Definitely, definitely something to add to your new installations and keep it there and hopefully improve upon it. Another example I have here is again, a busy city street. So if I, if I just restore the gamma here so you can see what we're working with, a lot of lights, right? A lot, a lot of lights. And if I, again, gamma down and compare the original, looks extremely flat with no range on those highlights and then compared to the output from that cat file, you see how we get something that resembles what should be the correct look of it when it's gamut down. Not perfect. Keep in mind that we're looking at very compressed images, but not only that, you can expect a lot of this, you know, digital noise coming from the results of this cat file, but I think it's still worth having. And then finally, a pretty good example is always, you know, when you, whenever you generate an image with the sun or get stock footage that's looking directly at the sun, what happens is that as you gamut down, you don't really get much range in there. And of course, everything clamps at one. Whereas if we look at the output here, you can see the, the water highlights look much, much nicer. Not necessarily the sun, but like I said, this is just a starting point and a lot you can do with this. You don't necessarily need to keep the sun. You can maybe just take advantage of things like the water. If I AB here a bit, I think having something like this is for you to more or less build your puzzle. I don't think it's a one node solution where you do it for every image you generate and then your output is great. I think for something like this, you would want to use your comp skills and build the puzzle as this tool allows. So that's going to be it for today. Definitely give some love to the author because it's very kind for them to share something like this. And again, I, I just hope that this inspires other people to be to do the same, hopefully inspires the foundry to do something like this, because I think having a tool like this that works properly would be an absolute game changer. If you have any other interesting cat files that maybe I haven't covered, definitely send them my way because this is something that I really like and I'm always on the lookout for the next thing coming out. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you for watching and until next time, stay curious. Cheers.